What's going on, y'all? Psych Perspectives, Geo Fucks. And this is a viewer left a comment basically discussing, yo, you, you didn't talk about how some black men only prefer dark men, dark complected, darker skin complexion, darker skin tone men within the black LGBTQ plus black queer black gay community. And I was like, you're right. I, I didn't mention that. So let's talk about it. Thanks for mentioning that and bringing it up. So let's talk about it. So, um, yeah, colorism, unfortunately, isn't going anywhere, has always been an issue in the community when it comes to black and brown people, people of color. Um, I mean, this is African-American, Jamaican, Dominican, Nigerian, Ghanaian, you know, Dominican, Puerto Rican, Chinese, Japanese, you know, Philippinian, Brazilian, Mexican, people of color, black folks, indigenous people constantly deal with colorism. And I want people to understand that colorism is a byproduct of racism, which is a byproduct of the overarching white supremacist power structure. You got white supremacy here, you know, the puppet master just dangling, controlling everything. And then you got racism and then you got colorism, right? All of these are just byproducts of white supremacy, okay? So what I mean by that is um, due to white supremacy and racism, the view that whiteness, okay, being white is the best thing. That's the best color, best skin complexion. So the lighter you are to the whiteness, the better you are viewed because of white supremacy and European beauty standards, right? Eurocentric beauty standards, okay? What's seen as being attractive and beautiful and handsome and sexy and blah, 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 blah. Where the darker complected, the darker the skin under white supremacy, racism, colorism, European beauty standards, the darker the skin, the more ugly you are viewed as, the less attractive you are viewed as, the less intelligent you are viewed as. Now, black people in particular have, have spent Decades, centuries, you know, working towards uh, getting freedom, liberation, equity, equality, inclusion, especially in the 60s and 70s, the 1960s, the 1970s, uh, in the 20th century, there was a huge push around loving your blackness, embracing your African features, your African ancestry, being proud to be black. I'm black and I'm proud. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Okay, that was James Brown in the 60s. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, I grew up in a household where uh, we always embraced being African-American, being black. Uh, definitely embraced our African ancestry. Um, black and proud was something that was instilled in me. Uh, I was raised by my, my baby boomer grandparents, my mother who is Gen X, my uncle who is Gen X, and I'm a millennial. So I grew up in that type of household, like black Santas, black Jesus, you know, Nefertiti, you know, um, just different things that basically influenced and then let us know who our culture was. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tutman, etc. We just always knew we were black. We celebrated Kwanzaa and Christmas. We did Juneteenth mostly as the celebration, and then we did do Fourth of July. But honestly, Juneteenth was the big deal growing up because my grandmother is from Arkansas and my grandfather is from Mississippi. And in Arkansas, close to Texas, matter of fact, there is a place called Texas Arcana. Okay, Texas Arcana. Texas and Arkansas together, literally right there on the state line in many ways. Um, that's what they celebrated. So that's what we celebrated. Again, we were always proud to be black. My mother 
is a beautiful black woman. You know, she has a darker skin tone, a darker complexion. Um, my grandfather, a darker, had a darker skin tone, a darker complexion. May he rest in power and peace. Um, his, both of his parents were darker complected, darker skin tone. And I just always grew up knowing that black is beauty. Black is beautiful. Black is strength. Black is love. Black is powerful. You know what I'm saying? I always grew up like that. But I also understood through my mother and what she experienced. She always was very conscientious of black skin is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. That's something that I grew up with. Now, keep in mind, she ended up getting with somebody that obviously was not the same complexion as her, let alone the same. Anyways, wasn't the same complexion as her, and I came out the way I came out, okay? But this is something I also want to point out. Just because somebody is lighter complected doesn't mean they're not black, okay? Um, and at the same time, just because somebody is lighter complected doesn't mean that they're better than anybody, doesn't mean that they're more attractive, doesn't mean that they're more intelligent. And I also want to note how colorism impacts people differently depending on culture, ethnicity, location, nationality. And I also want to pinpoint how colorism impacts people differently based on gender. Because gender dynamics are at foot with this. So what I mean by that is when you are a light-skinned woman within the black community, a lot of times you are put on a pedestal and you are seen as this very attractive, amazing, intelligent. She's the girl that you want to get with. That's your best friend. She's the cheerleader. She's the wife. She's the bae. She's seen as pretty much the epitome of beauty in the black community because of colorism and at the same time that's not always the same case for men in the black community so when you are perceived as a light-skinned man yes you're perceived as being attractive um and and what have you but you're also perceived as being weak feminine emotional docile you know what I'm saying? But yet you're also fetishized because there's this, oh, the light colored eyes, the green eyes, the hazel eyes, the blue eyes. Again, very anti-black, very internalized racism, internalized colorism. You know, it, white supremacy really impacts all of our psyche because we're living in this environment. We are products of our environment. However, it is up to us to break that Break out of that white supremacist, uh, out of that uh, colonizational mind frame, mindset. Um, where dark-skinned men in the community are also seen as being attractive and strong and the most masculine and the most powerful. And at the same time, also viewed as being the most dangerous, the one that is the threat, the brute, the, the aggressive you know what I'm saying? The vigilante, right? Where the light-skinned guy is basically seen as he's not really a threat. And like I said, he's often seen as being feminine. And here's the thing. Skin complexion, skin tone has nothing to do with you being masculine or feminine. <laughs> it has nothing to do with your intelligence. <laughs> has nothing to do with you being attractive. Okay, because you know what? I've seen plenty of light-skinned men that will beat your ass, and I've seen plenty of dark-skinned men get their asses beat. So let's understand that, right? Same thing where when it's the dark, the darker complected, the dark-skinned woman, she's seen as less than attractive on the attractive pole because of colorism. And that is something that my mother made sure to instill in me that, you know... Light skin doesn't mean that that person is better, doesn't mean that you're better, doesn't mean that you're all that in a bag of chips just because you're light skin. Dark skinned women are just as beautiful, just as educated, just as smart, just as worthy. She was always really big on that. She still is. My grandmother was really big on that as well. She still is. So I grew up in that type of family. 
So getting back to what the viewer um, left in the comment boxes, yes, preferences go deep. You do have people in the black community that prefer a certain type of skin complexion in the black gay queer community, okay? I personally have seen a lot of gay men, uh, black gay, bisexual, queer men of color, black men, who will literally flat out tell you uh, they want, they prefer chocolate. They prefer chocolate, a.k.a. they prefer darker skin complected men, which obviously if you're not darker skin complected, that basically means you're not the preference. And that sucks. Like I said before, it sucks when you are not somebody's preference, especially when you have them as your preference. But also, like I've been saying, very often more than not, a lot of times your preferences are not interested in you. And this is another reason why I keep saying preferences is, is largely why so many in the black gay queer community are single. Because you're constantly going off after a very small niche of the population. And that very small niche oftentimes is not even attracted to you, doesn't want you, doesn't respect you. But yet you're goo goo gaga over this particular preference or preferences, right? Just like I see a lot of people go goo goo gaga over light skin men in the gay queer community, LGBTQ plus community, black gay queer community, you know what I'm saying? And there are a lot of men that'll straight up say, I'm not into light skinned dudes. And there's a lot of men that'll say, I only date light skinned dudes, <laughs> or I only date light skinned or and racially ambiguous and or non-black men and or white men only. You see a lot of that. You know, there was just an interview with uh, with Don Lemon, used to be, you know, a news broadcaster commentator on CNN, and he did a like a brief little interview discussing, you know, why he is dating and married to a white man, because there was a lot of question around why is it all of these educated, well-to-do, financially well-off, accomplished black gay queer men... How come they always seem to end up in relationships with white men or non-black men or extremely racially ambiguous where you're not really quite sure what their race or ethnicity or nationality are or a light-skinned black man? And again, I'm going to say this and I'm going to keep saying this. Does colorism, white supremacy, anti-blackness, racism, does it play a role Yes. A lot, again, a lot of our preferences are rooted in these bigoted, closed-minded frames of thoughts, ideologies. And at the same time, pickings are slim. And I know I'm about to catch hell for saying this, but let's be real. In my, in my personal experience, if you are a black educated man, you got your shit together, you're educated, you have a degrees, you have certifications, you own a business, you're on the grind, you have a career, you're building, you've got your own money, your own car, your own house, you know, you're in counseling and therapy, you're getting your mental health together, you're getting your physical health together, you're getting your financial health together, you know, holistically, you're on your shit. Good luck finding another black man that's also going to be able to match you. Good luck on that. And I know a lot of people finna be like, oh, you don't know what you talking about. You a sellout. You a, you one of them coons. Ah, la, 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 la. And hey, you have every right to call me those things. Though That is your opinion. And that's great. And this is my lived experiences. Good luck on finding other black men, especially if that's all you're going to be trying to talk to because you've made them your preference. Good luck on finding other black men that are going to be able to compliment you. Because let's be real, unless you're in a major metropolitan area or you're located near one, you're not really going to find, in my experience anyways, 
I have not met that many other well-established black men or other black men that are on my level. I'm just going to be honest. And a lot of that is due to systemic oppression at the end of the day. I mean, I'm going to keep saying this. Uh, the way we socialize men and boys is largely why it's going to be difficult to find other well-to-do black men because they're not really raised to be well-to-do. It is what it is. You're literally raising them to be thugs, criminals, gangsters, rappers, and not saying that rappers aren't successful business people, aren't artists, right? Because they are. But you get, maybe you get where I'm coming from. We have a very narrow lens for what type of what masculinity and what type of role models are actually out here for black boys and men. And I should say for black cis men and boys, because I'm an intersex trans man who happens to be black, right? <laughs> but my point is, when I look around, I'm more likely going to run into somebody that either doesn't have the same education as me, didn't go to college at all, high school dropout, only have their high school diploma, or just got their GED. That's what I'm more likely going to run into in my area. I'm just going to be honest. Unless I'm going to Detroit, Ann Arbor, Lansing, Grand Rapids, you have to go to very specific areas to find these preferences that everybody wants to focus on. And this is why I mean by you're literally looking for a needle in a haystack a lot of times. And because of that, you don't really have the same options, in my opinion. And which brings me to my next point. The illusion of options. We do not have all of these options that a lot of us like to think we have. We really don't. But I'm going to do another part.